in this video. This is Systems of Equations video number three, and we're going to do another substitution example. As we go through this series, you're going to realize that we can use any technique that we want, but for now, let's just focus on some more substitution. And a question I get from students quite often is, is how do I know what variable to get by itself? How do I know where to start? And the answer to that, there is no specific way or no specific step that you need to start with with substitution except for this. Take an equation and get a variable by itself. I didn't say what variable to get by itself. Take an equation, either the first one or the second one, and get a variable by itself. Now looking at this first equation here, the negative 5x is equal to negative 3 minus y. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get y by itself. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to get y by itself because there's not much work to do. Now you may be saying, well, why couldn't we get x by itself? And you could, but that would lead you to dividing by negative five to get this x by itself, and that would bring in fractions. And you know we want to avoid those if we can, right? But there's nothing wrong with doing that. And this equation down here, if you tried to get a variable by itself, you would introduce fractions as well. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just going to avoid that in this example. So again, back to here, let's get this y by itself. Multiple ways to do this. I'm going to add the three over here to the negative five x and the threes cancel out. So we have negative five x plus three is equal to negative y. Now we do not have y by itself yet. We need to divide by negative one because this is an understood negative one times y. Let's divide by this negative one and we wanna make sure we divide both of these terms over here, the negative five x, divide that by negative one as well as this positive three that we have here. So negative five x divided by negative one is positive five x. This positive 3 divided by negative 1, that's a negative 3. And now, finally, when these negative 1s cancel out, we have y by itself. So again, it does not matter which variable you get by itself. Pick the easiest one. And in this case, I think getting that y by itself like we did here is the easiest approach because any other variable that we tried to get by itself here, I assure you we would have some fractions to deal with. So now we have this y by itself, and just like in video number two, once you get a variable by itself, notice we had an x by itself here, I don't care, we take whatever that stuff is equal to. This blue box back in video number two, we want to substitute that into the other equation for the correct variable. So now if we look at our example here, we have y equals some stuff, and this stuff, we want to substitute it into the other equation for the correct variable. The correct variable to substitute this into is not the x. I see people make this mistake all the time. You want to plug it into that y. And why do you want to do that? Because y is equal to this stuff. So we take that stuff and we plug it into y in the other equation. So now let's rewrite this second equation, 3x minus eight, but instead of us writing y, since y equals this stuff, I'm going to write that stuff in parentheses. It's very important to remember when we're substituting this stuff here into y, we're gonna to have to multiply it all by this negative eight. That's why I wrote parentheses here so we can remind ourselves to distribute. And then I just brought down this equals 24 as I was blabbering on. But anyway, here we go, so three x, Negative eight times five x is negative 40 x. Negative eight times negative three, watch your signs, is positive 24, and this is equal to 24. Let's combine like terms. Three x minus 40 x, that's negative 37 x, plus 24, and this is equal to 24. Now, in this process right here, here's another spot I see students get tripped up on. We want to solve for x. That's the only variable we have left in this equation. Well, if we subtract 24 from both sides because we're trying to get x by itself, the 24s cancel out over here, we have negative 37x is equal to, and students freeze up right here. I see it quite often. 
Well, yeah, they cancel out. I understand that. But 24 minus 24, you got to write something down over here on this side of the equals. It's equal to zero. 24 minus 24 is zero, right? And now our last step here, negative 37 times something gives us zero. Well, the answer is zero. And if we divide by negative 37, you'll see that. The negative 37s cancel out. X is equal to zero divided by any number other than zero is equal to zero. So that's our value of X. X equals zero. Now that we have that, you want to take zero, plug it into X, and you may wonder, well, what equation do we plug it into? It does not matter. Now, I do recommend sticking with either the first one or the second one. Had you made a mistake with getting Y by itself here and you ended up plugging zero back into here, you could end up getting the whole problem wrong. So what I recommend doing, and I'm going to do this for every example I teach you on this series here, is whatever your variable is equal to, X equals zero, take it and plug it back into either the first original equation or the second original equation. Now, if you feel real confident with your algebra, then absolutely, you could plug it in right here, and that would give you the y. But I tell you what, I'm going to take this first equation here. So negative 5x is equal to negative 3 minus y. Just copy that down right here, and let's plug 0 in. So negative 5, plugging in 0, negative 5 times 0 is 0. This is equal to negative 3 minus y, and now we want to get y by itself. Check out this trick. I'm going to add the y over here to this side, and uh, you may be wondering, what in the world is he doing? Well, look at what happens. Negative y plus y, they cancel out. Zero plus y, well, zero plus any number is that number, so zero plus y is y. This is equal to, the only thing we have left over here is negative 3. So our y is equal to negative 3. With all that said, our solution is going to be 0, comma, negative 3. And now, let's just go back and plug this into both equations and make sure it works. So 0 is our x, the negative 3 is our y. Now, we just solved it based on this one, but let's just double check again. Negative 5 times 0, well, that's 0. And notice here, if we take negative 3 minus a negative 3, well, that's negative 3 minus a negative 3. That means negative 3 plus 3. We do get 0 over here, and we get 0 over here. Now, let's do the same thing for this second example. 3 times x, that's 3 times 0. Notice we have that right there. So all that junk is 0 and negative 8 times y. Y is negative 3. Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. And remember we had 0 plus 24, we get 24. Therefore, this solution works for both equations and that is why this here is the solution to this system of equations. And there you have it, several things going on here addressing the issue of how do I know what variable to get by itself? The answer there is it doesn't matter. Pick the easiest one. And then a, a spot down here where people get tripped up a lot, I see it where 24 minus 24, we know that's zero, but people kind of freeze up and they wonder what should I do with that? It's zero, it's a number. And then my other recommendation, too, is once you find a variable, until you get real comfortable with your algebra, I recommend taking that number and either plugging it back in here or here in one of these original equations to find that remaining variable like we did here. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.